couple of days, and you know, I, I gave it what I had for the time that I had. You know, mm. I gave them four rounds, and with two days training, that's about all I could, you know, sure. muster to give. Um, and and, and uh, Ariola, he's a he's a tough sob. He's you know, who knows how that fight would have went. My mind was elsewhere in that fight. So I mean, um, as far as the top fighters, they're all good. Yeah. Um, I, I can't I can't say one's better than the other. I can't even actually um, judge who's the best and who's the worst. So, so get, moving forward to Saturday, you're going to be here in London, uh, Minnesota Ice. You're going to be here. You've got Tyson Fury in front of you. He's confident. He's cocky. Are you giving it two rounds, three rounds, four rounds? How much is in the Minnesota Ice tank? Um, well, I, you know, I got... I, I was good for four four strong rounds of two days. I got ten days this time, so I think I'm good for all ten, um, and, and more because you know I, I with that Pula fight, they kind of I was kind of disappointed in myself that I carried myself around in the shape that I carried myself around in. You know, just you know I was working, I wasn't working out, you know this and that. Sure. But I've been working out ever since that uh, Pula fight, and I, and I can give it I can give it ten strong rounds. Joey, can I ask you this before I let you go? And thanks for your time tonight before you fly over. What do you do in Minnesota, Joey? What's your job when you're not punching and being punched? I, I work in a psych ward. So I work I work with the mentally and um, behavioral health um, people. Um, I'm, a, I'm a people person as far as that's concerned. I, I, I care about people. I care about their best interests, and I work at the hospital. Well, well, well I'll tell you what, mate. It may sound like a joke, but you're going to feel right at home on Saturday night. And I mean that nicely. Joey Abel, thanks so much for your time. Look forward to seeing you at the weigh-in on Friday, which, by the way, is open to the public. Joey Abel, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Joey Kane and Abel there. And in fact, that weigh-in is open to the public. Follow my Twitter or the Box Nation Twitter and we'll give you the details. Let's get a few people along. It's just down the road. It's about two o'clock, so it's at the end of lunchtime. Be an awful lot of fun to get along there. Uh, just to remind people, uh, it, it was actually jo Joey Abel's won 29 fights. 28 of them have been by knockout or stoppage. Uh, it won't go long, but hey, Tyson's been hit and hurt in the past. He gets back. Don't worry. I think, I think Tyson's an improving fighter. I really do. I, I think a fight like this, though, is a little bit of a fight where he might forget. Mm. Cause there's no, on paper. This Maybe is... his eyes looking at something else. Well, listen, listen, we're all thinking that him and Derek on the same brother, that might be a no fight in the future. Well, yeah. there you go, there you know, so we're, this, we're building up already, aren't we, sort yep. of in, in a way, but you sort of tend to think that this might be a fight where he could, if you take his eye off the ball and get caught, <laughs> he might get sugar, but this, there's, no way, there's no chance that Tyson's going to get beat, let's be realistic. Yeah. It's a nice fight for him. He would have to be knocked spark out, because he will get up, and one thing even his enemies say is that, you know, as he says, I'm a fighting man. <laughs> there isn't a man born out of a woman, I won't fight. But he's an improving fight. Uh, I think the bigger thing he's got to improve on is his discipline. If he, yes. if he gets that right, he's good. Here's the thing. It's Sorry, rest of the bill. Rest oh, of the bill. We've, talk, we've already talked about Derek Del Boy or uh, Huey Fury's on the bill. Huey Fury's on the bill. Younger cousin. That's nice. And I think, he, I think he's, he's coming along lovely. So do I. You know, I, I, and in the shadows, which is, which is good for him. He's getting the right fights and he's learning, he's learning his trade. He's going the distance. He's getting some stoppages. He's learning things all the time. I like the way he's being developed. Yep. I actually do. Bradley Ski, oh, unbeaten Bradley's... in a test against. Uh, okay, the guy's Vivian Harris, his best years maybe behind him, but still a test, bro. It's a good fight. Vivian Harris, his best years are miles behind him. Even so. But this is a perfect fight for Bradley Ski because yeah. it's a guy who's been around, he's experienced, mm. knew all the tricks of the trade. It's a good learning fight for Bradley Ski, and it's still a, still a dangerous fight for him, but a fight that he should win. And a nice guy, Stevie Collins Jr., on the bill, who we spoke to today. What a nice guy. He's a lovely guy, real, real, real. Yeah. Don't Learning do it. the trade from the Don't bottom up. Yeah, you know, and and another guy who's, uh, which is like similar to sort of Scott Quick. You know, no amateur experience, goes straight to the pro game and. And, well, uh, Georgie Keane's there. Is it yeah. Hart D Mitchell? That's a good test because he fought Bradley Ski only only six or seven months ago. It's a guy who goes the distance. Brilliant, and that's, and, and, that's what and he, he needs. That yeah. Bullioni in a test Bullioni, against yeah. an Italian. It's a big test of Italians. They're both going to have espressos during the rounds, not water. <laughs> Double espresso, probably Frankie. Uh, who else? Tommy Stalker. Tommy the Talker Stalker, Tommy the captain. Sto He's, Tommy he's fights. This is his first of two fights in a month, isn't yes. it? So that, that's good for him. But the fight Go on, Barry, of quickly. the night, I think, Go on, son. is Billy Morgan versus Michael Grant. Yes. Michael Grant, when he first came on the scene, was, was big things mm. for, for Michael Grant. And I think Billy Morgan, oh, he's, no, he's undefeated. It's a big test for him, and I think that's going to be, possibly, he might steal the show.
Barry Jones there doing his bit. It's a fantastic night at the cover box. Either get yourself along, and I'm sure there are tickets still available. Get yourself along to the way, and it's at 2 o'clock. I think it's at the cover box, but I'll tweet the details. More than that, if not, watch it with us live. We will be live on Sky Channel 449. That's HD. Oh, yes. Now, after the break, I'm going to be sitting down. I'm going to black it out, make it look nice, bit moody, good lighting, with Shane McGuigan and Carl Frampton. Just as a teaser, just as a taster, there's a little bit of... Carl Frampton in action. It's time for the big one. The champion, Carl Frampton. Belfast is in no mood for disappointment. That's a nice sweet right hand. Good body shots from Frampton. Phenomenal body shot. He's been counted out. It's all over. And Frampton has got the win he craved. The Odyssey Arena celebrates. Belfast celebrates. Ireland rejoices. And Frampton moves on. They say the fight is won before you enter the ring. In my favela. Oh, yes, the live boxing continues. This is the live boxing continues. In fact, tonight, 3 o'clock in the morning, Fidel Maldonado Jr. against John Nater. 10 three minute rounds at Light Welter. Now, Barry, that's live from the Cowboys Dance Hall in San Antonio. Now, I've got to be honest with you. If you and I were in San Antonio, it may sound odd, but I'd say to you, Barry, we just got to pop down to the cowboy dance hall. Because have you ever line danced? Uh, if you ever said that to me, yeah, I would be walk upset. away. You're joking? Yeah, I, I, all due respect, you're a nice man and everything, but I don't want to go. Would you ride away? I, would I you ride off in a sunset on your horse? I don't want to go dance with you at any cowboy dancing Let me session. tell you something. I, I went out to Houston, Texas, where they have the rodeo every year, and I have line danced with about 2,000 cowboys. In the sand where they where they where they ride the balls. There's no there's no there's no proof of this. There's no proof of this. I'm tell, I'm admitting now. Our producer must be loving all this dancing talk. Right He's now. up there swirling and curling. Ah, oh, yeah. now earlier on, as I hinted, we would be seeing a little bit more Carl Frampton and Shane McGuigan. So I got them in a little bit earlier because I wanted to control the in environment. And what I do is I put a black drape around, make it nice and moody. And I put in some chairs, which it makes us look like we're all just fro floating. In fact, we all look like, well, I don't because I'm a bit of a blob. But Shane and Carl look a bit like they're auditioning for Gravity 2, if ever they make a second one. It's quite, it's quite entertaining. Anyway, they came in, and the first thing I had to ask Carl was quite simple. Uh, was he shocked? Was he shocked by the reception that he got the last time he walked out in front of 9,000 devoted and fanatical people in Belfast? Kiko Martinez, the fight before, was, was well known in Ireland. People knew who he was, and there was a lot of... Sort was of, it a burn of dumb fight? Yeah, and, like and that, there, yeah. there was needle at the weigh-in and stuff, so I didn't think... Party wasn't really known that much. No. I didn't think the atmosphere would have, would have met the, the Kiko atmosphere, but it, it, it met it and more. It was much better. So, Shane, what happened then? Because you're absolutely right. Martinez was a harder fight. He had that history already yeah. with Dunn. We knew him. He came in talking. He was aggravation to Wayne West. Parody was a gentleman. Everybody loved him. So what happened? What was the difference? Well, I think the thing is is that people just want to get behind their, their star, and if they, mm. if they believe in them, and everybody seems to be believing in Cole, you know, and they think that he's going to be going to win a world title and, and defend it and move up in weight divisions, which we've been saying for years, but it's it's finally now people are Working. starting to understand he's the real deal and, and he's going to he's gonna go and fulfil everything that we've, we've been saying. Now we're back at the, uh, the Odyssey. We're, we're expecting it to be sold out again. Uh, April the 4th for Friday night, and mm. we've got Hugo Cazares, the Mexican former world champion, and a final eliminator yeah. for the WBC uh, title. Are you the type of fighter, Carl, that needs to watch hours and hours of DVDs? No, not a lot. I watch I watch a little bit, obviously, but not too much. I think I can kind of, if you're watching it non-stop, it'll put your head away. But mm. 
Shane will watch a lot more than me, and I'll just, you know, I trust him completely, and I'll, I'll go with whatever he says. But we bring sparring partners in to suit the, the opponent, obviously, but I, I don't watch too much. Is it hard to get sparring partners now, say harder now, or pricier now, than it was a year or 18 months ago? Yeah, you know, I think, um, uh, you know, the guys that are coming in, you'd think that they would want to come in to learn. You're knocking and, your door and, down. Um, you know, learn off a champion like, like Carl, you know, he's European champion, he's, he's the next big thing. and. Um, but these young fighters, they, they just don't want to get beaten up. That's the problem, yeah. And so we've got to go and, and fork out and get get inspiring partners. And uh, you know, especially with the small guys, these guys aren't lasting with Carl more than four, three or four rounds. So we've got to bring in like welterweights, welterweights, and this opponent, you know, Cazares, is he's only five foot he's four. Small, so, so that creates a problem. Exactly. You know, we we need to be learning how to punch down and, and fire in shots and rolling combinations off. And you know, you can't just be you know pot shot with big guys because. It's, it's just it's a pointless exercise, really. But surely not all young fighters are turning you and turning you down. Surely you've got some yeah, not yeah. desperate to get in the gym. Yeah, we got you know Isaac Dogbo, who's our who's our chief sparring partner for this for this fight, and he's a, a serious talent. He went to the Olympics. Yeah. And um, you know he's he's only had one fight, but he can last you know seven rounds with Carl and and flat out pace, and he's he's a phenomenal talent. And the, the spars that they're having is, you know, you pay to watch it. It's, it's brilliant stuff. Now, you train here in, in, in London, Carl, then you get on a plane either every weekend or most weekends, however mm -hmm. it works, go back uh, and see your, your baby and, and, and your partner. Uh, has it changed for you being out in Belfast in that last year, say pre-Martinez to what it is now pre-Gazars? Has it, has it altered drastically for you? Uh, not drastically, a little bit, you know, I'm getting recognised a bit more and, and people are starting to, they're getting on the bandwagon now, you yeah. know, they're, they're seeing something that they, they believe can be, I can, they believe I can become a world champion, so they're wanting to sort of join the raid and join the journey, but um, it's changed a bit, but it's, over here as well, I got, I got spotted twice walking over Battersea Bridge today, so that wasn't bad. That's, it's not bad going, yeah. it's kind of fame by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't, that usually happens once every three what, weeks, but what, twice in one day. Listen, I'll be honest with you, if you put <laughs> boxes either side of Battersea Bridge and you walk them across, you could probably just walk over legions of boxes yeah. before <laughs> yeah. they'd be recognised. So if he gets recognised twice in one day, that's not bad going. He's doing something right. Yeah, you, you, are, you are doing something. <laughs> something right. in, the week of the, in the week of the fight, you, will you go back to Belfast, what, ten days before, eight days before? Will you do any open sessions where you can drag well, people in yeah uh, for the last one we did it we did an open training camp uh, so an open uh, training session with all the undercard fighters and mm -hmm. and obviously um parody and, and Carl. it was sure. in the in the shopping center yeah. so um yeah just just to create a bit more interest we didn't have to do it because we'd already sold the arena out but mm -hmm. we did it just to sort of you know get everybody have everyone a chance to see Carl. you know so mm -hmm. it was it was good now, Belfast is a unique city in many ways. Liverpool's a bit like it. It's maybe parts of Birmingham, Manchester, maybe even parts of London. But Belfast is spe specifically unique, I, I, I think, because of that mad amateur following, you know, mm. where you are an amateur star. You can be a 17-year-old or an 18-year-old and have a cult following that sells out the Dockers or any yeah. other place, 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 you, place you're boxing. And, but the, switching over to the pros, even though they've been big fighters since Barry McGuigan, you know, your father, good 25 years ago, they've been fighters that have done some business. But you seem to be doing even more business. Were you doing that type of business as an amateur, Carl? Was there a kind of, was there a mad, you know, were, were they coming to see you then in well, the same it, numbers? It, I, I used to box in, the, the football team I support, Crusaders, used to box, you know, have club shows in our social club, and we used to pack it out, you yeah. know, but... Way beyond safety, health and safety. Yeah, like yeah, there was people it. standing in each other's heads and stuff mm. in there, but it was it was crazy, but this is just something else now, and I I think a lot of that's to do with the whole team and the whole promotion, and, you know, Barry being my manager, he's mm. been there and done it, and people's, you know, people are starting to think... The, the people that seen Barry boxing, they're starting to think maybe I yeah, can. coming do, back as well. Yeah, maybe I can do what Barry done. Honestly, I, I sold more tickets than him. As yeah, the I, the, 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 do you know what, Shane? I swear, I, I haven't got a script here, but the next <laughs> question, the next question on it is that when you're at the office, you were yeah. more popular. Don't worry, don't worry. Was he was away. I was coming to that. Let's be honest, but they all, was, they all came out to see me. He was Barry. I remember I used to like I was I was Irish senior champion. He had 20 fights, and the, he was selling the doctors out, and the UTV were falling around. I'm like, who's this guy? Yeah, but. but it all worked out well, didn't it? <laughs>
<laughs> and listen, I've been at the docker, so I, I know, I know, I do know, I do know, I do know, I do know exactly what you're talking about here. Uh, Shane, Shane, let me let me take you back to those days when you when you were boxing out there, because it, we, I've had you in on the sofa before, even though we we're on the chairs today. I never talked about that part of your life. We sort of jumped straight to you now as a trainee, trainer, yeah. basically working your way through fighters, learning your trade, just like some of the guys you're teaching are doing. Back when back when you were boxing, um, did you? So has it been hard for you not boxing? Was it an easy thing to stop? Because you're relatively young when yeah. you stopped. And there is a problem with Xboxers becoming trainers the next day. One yeah, day yeah. they're training for a fight, the next day they're training people for a fight. Was it a hard transition for you? Well, you know, the thing is, is I trained for, I think I did about seven years as an amateur, and then for six months before I stopped, every day I woke up and there wasn't, I did, I did not want to go to the gym. How old were you at that point? 21. So you're still a baby, and I was still a pup, but like I was struggling at the weight I was doing, 69 mm. kilos. I'm now 83, mm. and it was it's just becoming a, a ball lake for me, really. And, mm. and and Dad was like, you know, come on, keep going. He, everyone has these lols, but I just sort of I just had enough of it, really. Packed it in, and I was gonna actually make a comeback because the next, you know, my my style was very suited to a pro, so I was gonna sort of have a comeback and. struggle my way through I'd take up training and I really enjoyed it oh did you feel extra pressure actually walking away did you, did you feel as a McGuigan a bit yeah. of extra pressure saying I'm not gonna box anymore I'm gonna train no but, well I, I felt more a bit let, well I was gonna let dad down really because he dedicated you know seven eight years of his life mm. training me every day but he was like he was over the moon that I didn't mm. want to box you know, because so. he could sense that you didn't want to get up in the morning, you yeah. didn't really want to be in the gym. Well, he said the same thing when, when after he after he lost to um, uh, Cruz, mm. he was in the gym and he says every day he was in the gym. He says it was a struggle and he hate and he hated every day. And then yeah. his dad passed away and he had that long court case with Barney yeah. Swift and then he made the comeback fight. He says it was never the same again. And he says he wished he hadn't have made the comeback because he, he you know didn't he, enjoy he, he didn't enjoy it. And that in and he said whenever that happens to you. You know, you, you know, that's what he spent his life in the boxing game for. So, na so now that they're well past that, yeah. three or four years past that, you, you don't, you don't feel that urge. Now you don't need, you don't fancy you want to have to go and spar or anything. No, no. Okay. I mean, look, I, I, I always like, always like the train. I always like the sparring. Yeah. I, I didn't like getting in the limelight as much, but uh, yeah, the spar, the sparring and the pad work and all that. That was that. I sometimes fucking want to hit the bag and yeah. all that, but I, I just, I just like training people. Really. Was, was it? Odd for you, not hard. Was it odd for you? You know, when you first started training as a pro, having Shane alongside you, then then Shane suddenly starting to work with you just as a coach. Was it was it an odd was it an odd a transition you found diff odd or no, difficult? No, not really. And a, a lot of people would because he's younger yeah, than me. Yeah, that's what I mean. But yeah. it, it it sort of you know I've been around him a lot, and we used to sit and watch fights together, and it used to amaze me how he, he could like watch an opponent and, and pick out his weaknesses a lot quicker than I could. Mm. And I've been boxing longer than him. Yeah. Um, he could pick things out on the pads. Like he's he's a very very good pad man, mm. and everything sort of thought about. You don't just you know a lot of you get a lot of coaches who take the mm. pads and they'll take every box of the half the yeah, same course. way on the pads. But he's always changing things for different opponents. He's a very very good coach, and uh, it, was, it was pretty easy to be honest. Yeah, but that, he's got he's got all the talent in the world, Carl. And sometimes he doesn't he doesn't see like he's still nowhere near maximizing his potential. Mm. You know, whereas you know, you get these fighters that are their their punch selection is just not not there. You know what I mean? If you get yeah, if they get if they get somebody hurt, they can't take them out. Whereas yeah. he's an unbelievable finisher. He can he can make people look silly, mm -hmm. and uh, he's got all the talent. He just needs needs to be tweaked a little bit here and there. Does he surprise you sometimes, Shay? Because he surprises me. I'm, yeah. I'm imagine he's not here. Just kind of just yeah. relax yourself. Do a bit of yoga or something. <laughs> sometimes when he finishes, and yeah, I don't want to yeah. make his head feel too big, but sometimes yeah. when he finishes, you're about to think in your head, just step to the side and pull that down the shoulder, and he does it. Yeah, he's, yeah. Uh, he's done that about half a dozen times now with me. 
Oh, well, well, against the Parody, something. Parody fight. For yeah, instance. Parody's one I, example. I, yeah. I, I knew he could take him out earlier. And I was going left yeah, hook yeah. to boy, left hook. But he, he, he just, he boxed his ears off, did a nice little show, and then when he, when he felt the time was right, bump left hook to boy, he half hit him. Yeah. And it was, the shot was there for the whole night, but yeah. he's, uh, he, he takes his time. <laughs> All right, so enough of the loving. Let's get down to the serious stuff now. We've got the loving stuff out of the way. Let's move on to the serious stuff. Now, you, you, you get through Cazares, OK? Yeah. Uh, you know, a bit of patience. You wear him down. You get there. We move closer to Leo Santa Cruz, OK? Yeah. The WBC's uh, champion. Because uh, that's where we're going, isn't yeah. it? We're not, we're not trying to get there thinking he's moving up so we fight for a vacant title. Yeah, yeah. No, we're we've decided. No, no. I mean, it's the, it's the royal we. We've yeah. decided on Santa Cruz, yeah? Yeah, we want to fight him. And there's already been discussions <laughs> with Golden Boy. Um, yeah. Leo Santa Cruz has mentioned my name a number of times. He he wants to fight me. I think he's in the same boat as me. He's a he's a guy who wants to be involved in in big fights, mm. and it's a massive fight. I think yeah, yeah. I think Regal's the best in the division right now. But I think mm. the two most exciting fighters in the division are myself and Santa Cruz. And I think mm. that's the best fight. Um, I think that happens in the summer if we beat Santa Cruz, if we beat sorry Cazares, that fight will happen in the summer. And Jake was telling me, your brother was telling me, we, we think we can get him here. We think we can get Santa Cruz here in the summer. We also think we can get him ringside on the fourth of April. Is that correct? Yeah, we're hoping. Yeah, we're, we're hoping. And uh, if he comes, you know, it's it's going to be, uh, you know, bring a few Golden Boy guys over as well, mm. and we'll see the atmosphere. And the thing with with Santa Cruz is if we. Even with Cazares, yeah. you know, if it had been the right time of year, you could have filled 15,000 yeah. seats outdoor. Yeah. The Odyssey is the biggest indoor venue sure. in Northern Ireland, so we're thinking of going outside in the summer and you, know, you put 15 to 20,000 for a Santa Cruz fight, it would be amazing. Raven Hill, something like that. We could that, do that, couldn't we? I mean, we could, we oh, could do, yeah. yeah. The place, yeah without, the without, without a ballistic sale, that's what I'm saying. The place yeah. would have sold out already. Yeah. We've obviously, because the undercard hasn't fully been announced yet, you have to hold some tickets back for the, the fighters to sell, but. We sold four and a half thousand tickets in a day, and uh, the place would have been sold out already. Nine thousand, you know, it's 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 great. Now we we, we fell on to Santa Cruz because mm -hmm. Kiko Martinez, which we all just assumed would be the natural rematch, just to refresh people's memory. You you bash him up, stop him last year of a masterclass. Mm -hmm. He then gets the phone call to fight for the world title. Give him his dues, goes yeah, away, yeah. wins the world title, defends it at home in Spain. You go out assuming or thinking or hoping any one of those take your pick that he'll be the guy we get in a world title fight sometime above us is that dead the martinez thing or is it just a case of you couldn't play second fiddle and beggars no it's not it's not it's not dead i mean look the thing is is if i was his coach i wouldn't want him to go and fight carl frampton again that's even that's for the money that was on offer. even for the money because you know in in his eyes that fight's always going to be there if he keeps yeah. winning the fight's always going to be there and you know if, if carl beats santa cruz which we think sure. then he's definitely going to beat him and then you know you got another you got a martinez frampton uh, down the line. second fight down the line 20,000 seat arena again but to be honest i don't think he's going to keep keep winning so mm. he's kind of shot himself in the foot there yeah, and in case he could he could end up losing for a third of what was on the table for losing to you, but then that's that's exactly. the way the business works. I yeah. mean, the business is not a fair business, as you as you you know, it's, just, it's not a fair and, business. And if he loses, yeah, there's no point in the no, fight. No, of course not. There's no point in the fight because he's been beaten a handful of times. Then he's coming cap in hand, cap in hand to you guys. Now you mentioned earlier on about moving up, moving up in weight. Uh, how far can you go if you if you wanted to, Carl? Well, that's a f I'm, I'm only a wee man. I'm short, mm. so um, powerful, but short. So uh, I could go up to super far. We, you know, not not too far. I don't want to. I don't want to go up, you know, much further sure. than that. But that's you know, I'm super pumped with now. Um, you know, we're thinking ahead here, and I'm yeah, thinking yeah. about. I'm thinking about winning the world title at Super Bantam, and yeah. then I'm thinking about blockbuster fights. I'm yeah. thinking about you got to, guys like Mares at Featherweight, yeah. yeah. and, and then moving up to Super Fat. They're, yeah. they're, they're huge fights there. Well, look, Phyllis, that's, that's how you have to think. You know, you have to think you get a, a world title, mm. you have one nice homecoming fantastic fight, which is, you know, which are you allowed, then you've got to start thinking about parlaying that, moving that into Super Fights. Because the, the way the sport's been the last five or six years, it's about getting a title and then jumping across here, catch weights, all sorts of mad things. It's been some brilliant, the last eight, two years, two and a half years of guys jumping all over weights. Oh yeah, I mean like, even Santa Cruz, he stepped up, yeah, you know, weight division, he wants to go up But he's big weight. anyway, isn't he? Yeah. He's, he's, he's not as big, this is the biggest super yeah. bantamweight out there, in terms of like the next day, he's, he's come fight night, you know, he in the ring, he's the biggest super bantamweight in the world, hands down. 
Like he'd, he'd definitely be the heaviest. He's he's a he's a machine. He's a tank. So he's he can go up to featherweight, super featherweight. I think even even lightweight. Provided the opponent yeah. wasn't yeah. a guy that looked like a welter five eleven. Oh, but yeah. the problem is, is he he doesn't have the height, you know, to yeah, go up. Course. I mean, like if you think about Mayweather, he's five seven. You know, on a mm. good day, but he, he's got the he's got the he height to sort of tall. go up to. Yeah, he you know, and when he when, you, when you big guys like Santa Cruz, titles don't even have to be on the line. There's just not. names, you know, yeah, at that yeah. point, and and there's plenty of names out there. Big fights. Yeah, big big fights that you can, that you can catch up. Uh, will there be a fight uh, in New York in Las Vegas? Is it something you're thinking about? Is it something that you, you feel you've got to do? Or is it something you think will just happen? Yeah, I, I think it will happen. Because um, you want it to happen. I want it to happen. I think it's. I think it's got to happen as well. Uh, I think that, especially on the East Coast, I, you know, without being big-headed, but mm. being a, an Irish guy, yeah, you know, it could be huge out there. And if you're winning and, and beating guys like Santa Cruz, as we said, and you're fighting on the East Coast and in New York, it's it's just or it's Boston gonna, or even yeah, down in Philadelphia, where people massive. forget about the Irish population yeah. in Philly. You do me a favour, if you do fight in America. Can you make sure you don't put on a, a ridiculous Irish accent? Because oh, Irish fighters, that. when they go to the East Coast, yeah. especially, they get off the plane like yeah. they're coming from some sort of studio. Yeah. It's, it's absurd, Carl. Don't be put. I stick stick, won't. stick don't with worry. what you've got at the moment. Don't put on a fake Irish accent me, over I there. Won't. This is Tim Down. Now. This is this is my Tim Belfast accent. No, it's nothing. I've got no problem with it. For the TV, it. so. Um, <laughs> What's your TV voice? Yeah, I'll. Uh, <laughs> No, I'll not change. Don't worry about that. Uh, 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 the, that whole East Coast thing is, is interesting. Obviously, Vegas is where, in theory, the bigger money money is. But that East Coast thing, that, that's a big market there. And over the years, plenty of fighters mm. uh, have, had a, have had a bit of a run there. Andy Lee's had a little bit of a run there. Yeah. Uh, of course, Matt Macklin's been in and out, had a little bit of a run. A little bit of, uh, of a run there. That, that, it, that, that, that must be something to you as an Irish fighter that, that looks inviting, that looks yeah. enticing, having a couple of fights up and down I, that coast. It looks amazing. And you yeah. look what... John Duddy, no disrespect. Yeah, Duddy, so I forgot about John, he was yeah. A, he was a good fighter, but not he amazing. He was the Lord of New York. Oh, they loved him, they have, and they still do love yeah. him. And he was selling out Madison Square Gardens and stuff for like 10 rounders. He's a, if, you know, the support is, the supports are, and they just want to see a good fighter coming through, and I think that when the time's right, yeah. we'll hit we'll hit America but, and but take up a storm. There's loads of Mexicans there as well. Yeah, so, of course. Because you know, the, the, the Puerto fight, Rican and stuff, yeah, yeah, it's all over. That in itself, you know, the Santa Cruz. Could work there. Hampton, yeah, the, I mean, we're not. Times. Every time he's in Belfast, obviously, or any, anywhere in, in, in North or South, he gets invited into the ring. But I've only ever yeah. seen him do it, do it on one particular uh, occasion. That was at the King's Hall once for an Eamon Lockham fight, yeah. the goodish, goodish crowd. But that night, you could see, he was just, oh, it's buzzing, he was just yeah. in raptures. It just, just took him, didn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing is, is he had that, you know, that X factor about him, the yeah. same that Carl does, and, and he got that phenomenal su support. And I think. Yeah, there's, there's a little, there's a little bit inside of him that he, st he yeah. still wants to get back in the ring. Yeah. I tell you what, if I train him up, I reckon <laughs> don't, don't. he'd make lightweight and he'd still, he'd still win a couple hey, of titles. Listen, I'm he's a machine. He's a Azuma, beast. Azuma Nelson and Jeff Fennick fought each other about three years ago. Remember, they were both fifty plus. But they, but they went on too long and they, they, quit. they, they yeah, were a little bit shot. Too. Whereas so, 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 so he's, he's Baza, might, Baza he's, might be fresh. He's a fine wine. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Please, <laughs> whatever you do, don't, don't, get don't, with it. don't even joke about it. That, that leads me to always where where we're going to finish this um, growing pressure Carl on you I mean we've talked about how Belfast a big fight city and how you've been taken to its, to its fighting heart we're talking about Barry being sucked in by the atmosphere we've talked about that and we've, we've laughed and joked but you're only a normal you're only normal you're only yeah. a human being you know you've got, you've got your baby you've got your partner you've got your life to deal with are you starting to feel just that bit of extra pressure There's Definitely, but I, I I love it. Genuinely love it. There's there's people who they just they just expect me to win a world title. They think yeah. Frampton's going to win a world title. It's, it's, it's a given. given. Yeah, but it's not. You know what? Do you have to explain that to them? Yeah, I kind of. You have to do that. It's it's a hard game. It's a hard division of men as well. Yeah. Um, and obviously when when fighters are avoiding you as well, it's not easy. But explaining that to people. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know trying to explain it all. It's hard for the to take it in the average Joe, mm. but. Um, there is pressure, but I think I perform best under pressure. 
Uh, I've done it since an amateur, sure, and and I'm still doing it now. So in some ways, is it when you're out of the spotlight, maybe back at your amateur boxing club, maybe around people like Paddy Barnes and stuff, mm. that it's easier because you don't have to explain anything, as opposed to when the media uh, are pushing you, or perhaps you go, you know, literally go to. Go to signings or meet and greet. Is yeah, it easier? It's, with... it's much easier around. Yeah. Obviously, Paddy's, Paddy's a, you know, one of my yeah. best mates, and he's a boxing guy, but he knows when he knows to talk crack. about boxing and know when, when yeah. not to talk about yeah. it. And and he's involved in it as much as me. And and sometimes he wants his head, you know, given a rest as well. Um, but you know, explaining all the time about people saying, oh, I've offered you, they've offered you this, but and you didn't accept it, and. Trying to explain everything, it's just, uh, it's just Twitter rumours. Yeah, well, you know, listen, Twitter's yeah. both good and good bad, and bad yeah. dreadful and fantastic in equal yeah. measure. Let's not, let's not imagine it isn't. So, so we're all set for April the fourth, Kazari. Be, be out there. Uh, training's all going well. Weight, weight, weight coming down. Okay. When might? When's the sort of grand plan for Santa Cruz? Are we thinking April, May, June? Any, any ideas? Well, we want to keep him busy, you see. I mean, Carl stated to us that he, want, he wants to have at least three fights, looking to maybe get, I mean, four. four maybe, so, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, we, we, we just want to, get, we want to get the ball rolling, really. Once Good in the summer again. Get Kazar's out of the way, then, then we're looking at June. Yeah, so they may be out in June, assuming it all goes well on April the 4th when he fights uh, Hugo Cazares um, in a final eliminator, as they pointed out to me, for the WBC Super Bantamweight title. Now, if you like that, if you like the feel of that with me talking and the black drape and the two chairs, it's quite moody, it's quite nice, it's got that sort of gravity field trip. This Thursday at 7.30 after Boxing Matters, you'll see what happened when I met Tyson Fury and his uncle and trainer Peter Fury. It's nice and moody. I quite like it. And they're an awful lot of fun. So thanks to Shane and thanks to Carl and during that film, because we're live here, we only do things live. We had a rival. This man came and joined us. The Southern Area Super Featherweight Champion has joined the former WBO Super Featherweight Champion, Barry Jones, on the sofa. It is, of course, Mitchell Smith. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers. Cheers. Uh, Mitchell, now, uh, before we talk about your fight on the Feb 22nd, we'll talk a little bit about that and a little bit about a few other things. Um, you've actually been and sparred with Carl Frampton. What was yeah. it like? Um, it's a good experience. Um, it's... Uh, it's good for me as well because obviously it's, he's, he's, he's almost like world level now. And, uh, you know, he's a tremendous fighter. He's, he's knocking on the door of a world title. And uh, he, I believe he can go and win a world title, yeah. Was it a hard spar? It was. It was tough for me because it was new. <laughs> um, and he doesn't hold back neither. Yeah. So um, I had to catch everything because if I take one clean, it's going to... That's going to work. So. Yeah. But, but good experience for you. Great experience. Oh, great experience. No matter how hard it is. No, when we got the phone call to come up and spar, um, I, was re I was really nervous like, to go and spar with him because obviously watching him and that, you know, a great fighter. But it was such a great experience to get in with somebody. And then when I got out, I felt like I was actually, I was coming on every time I was sparring him. Sure. I could, every time I went improving. back, I was improving. I was learning things. I was learning from him. I was, you know, I was... Um, I was feeling stronger in myself. I could take shots, and it was it was really good. It was it was good all round for me, and hopefully I'll be able to do more more for him, you know, in his next. Well, they said nice things about you as well, to be honest. Yeah, yeah don't worry about that. I remember uh, the time. We'll hear a bit more from Mitchell, and we'll find out a little bit about what happened when uh, Martin Ward was plucked, run the lottery, and managed to get himself a world title fight with Stewie Hall. Barry will also continue adding his bit. I'll add my bit. Mitchell Smith will add his bit. You can add your bit if you like. You can keep sending in your tweets. But right now, it's a loo break. It's 90 seconds. See you in a minute. Yeah, 
Yes, another fight announced today for Box Nation. Live from Magdeburg in Germany, Saturday the 1st of March. Put it in your diary because it is crunch time. It is the decider, the settler. Das Settler! As they don't say in Germany, but boy, I conjured in there. Robert Stieglitz against Arthur Abraham. They're 1-1 at the moment the last time was a shocking performance from Arthur Abraham I thought he was gone I really did he lost there basically got smashed and quit and cut and he just wasn't right his corner and the people around him looked in shock so this is the third one the rubber the the side of Barry Jones on the sofa with me Barry you with me for the last uh, two Abraham Stiglitz fights before we go back to Mitchell uh, are you surprised that we're still talking about Art Abraham after the second Stieglitz fight. I am. I'm also, after that fight, he hasn't looked impressive either. I no. think he's lost half a pace, half a yard in pace. And for a, for a guy like him, you know, a very aggressive guy who likes, to, who likes to wear you down and then come mm. on later, losing a bit of pace is, is the beginning of the end, I'm afraid. I think it's a, I don't think Stieglitz stops him this time, but I think it's an easier fight for Stieglitz to one point. But you never write King Arthur off, do you? <laughs> never do. He's come back from... Uh, Come back from Broken jaws and everything, hasn't he? So, yeah. Terribly deformed jaws. Uh, uh, Mitchell, you're, you're boxing on Feb 22nd yeah. at your call in yeah. Tony Conquest, his top of the bill, right. Commonwealth title fight. Uh, you, you're, you're on that bill. Uh, won't talk too much about that fight, but your regime in the build-up has been different. You, you know, your training system, you, you're living, what, in, in luxury. T t tell me about it. You're making both of us envious <laughs> during the break. Tell us um, about it. I mean, I've got a good, I've got a good sponsor in Winter Worldwood. My my main sponsor, Paul Winters, um, he uh, does building work, and he's got a 2.2 million pound mansion that he's uh, going to knock down in April. Um, what to build a bigger one? To build a big. Oh, you know, I hate a, that. You get a little mansion, a 2.2 million mansion. All you want to do is knock it down, build something proper. I understand oh, I that. I mean, I don't know if I was, if I had it, I'd be over the moon with it. But I mean, we, we've we've moved in there. He's got he's got me over there and. We're living in there. It's got a big gym out the back that we've wow. got bags, seat, floor to ceiling ball, uh, speed ball. There's mirrors in there. That we've got everything. We've got everything we possibly need. So does Jason go there, or do you go uh, to we, Jason? We still. I mean, we still. still I'm still out. I'm still out during the day. I'm, I think it's good for yeah. me to be out most of the day, train yeah, on the trains and moving about instead of just sitting at home all so day. So yeah. I'm out over in Loughton, and that's still training with Jace. And then I'm training over in the mansion. And you're living in the mansion. And, yeah, and it, you know it's it's nice.